Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the franchipreneurs of all one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show today. We're meeting with Nancy Bigley, brand president and CEO of The Little Gym. And The Little Gym is an internationally recognized program that helps children build the developmental skills and confidence needed at each stage of their childhood. We're going to talk to Nancy about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around, because we have a great show. Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems, which include brick and mortar as well as home based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no-obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews, from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the franchipreneurs of all one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. Well, we're meeting with Nancy Bigley, the brand president and CEO of The Little Gym. And The Little Gym is an internationally recognized program that helps children build the developmental skills and confidence needed at each stage of childhood. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, Marty. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Nancy. I don't know if you remember. I, I, I was just thinking back. I was reflecting, Nancy. I said, oh, my God, the last time I spoke to you, I think it was 10 years ago, if you, if you remember. I know. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I yes. said, where has the time it gone? It went by right? quick, didn't it? I know. Yeah, it sure did go by quick. So it, it's fantastic, you know, because I've been following your career, you know, and, and, and seeing you do so well. So it, it's terrific. Um, it, we we'll like to ask our guests, where are you calling from this morning, Nancy? Uh, well, I am actually at our um, Unleashed Brands headquarters in Bedford, Texas this week. So, oh, yes, fantastic. we're having an awesome discovery day with um, multiple brands of ours. So it's, it's, it's an exciting week for us, that's for sure. That's, that's terrific. Um, I had to tell you, Nancy, before we even started the interview, my, my son's very first birthday party, I think he was, I think it was four years old, was at a little gym. And we have like 
Oh. Probably like 200, 300 pictures. So the little gym is very important to us. So to be able to interview oh. today and talk to you about the little gym is is uh, is kind of sentimental. You know, we were looking at the pictures. Oh, and, that's uh, special. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, so it, it's great. It. So, yeah, maybe, you know, we can kind of like, you know, go back to the beginning as you could walk us through, you know, the history of the little gym and maybe some of the milestones. Yeah, for sure. So um, we, you know, we've been around a long time, so forty-six yes. years, um, amazing. and uh, it, it's amazing, right? And I think it's a yeah. very similar story to most founders. Um, and I've had the pleasure of, of meeting Robin, um, our founder, and he's mm-hmm. such an, a unique, amazing human. And you know, he really just has such a passion for kids. He never set out to you know, grow this company and have this right. big 400 plus location business. Yeah. He just wanted to help kids. So back in, what, 1976, um, and, mm-hmm. and Robin is a um, educator, he's a musician, he's a kinesiologist, yeah. which is really the study of human, human movement. So it's a very interesting, right. like, mix of background that he has. Yes. And so uh, he just wanted to help kids in Bellevue, Washington. And so he opened, you wow. know, our first gym there and, and really had it for quite a long time. And, uh, you know, his his whole concept and when I talked to him and listened to his story, like, mm-hmm. he just wanted to create this amazing, safe, fun place for kids so they could learn, right. they could play, they could grow. And he really is passionate about not having it be competitive, right? Because when you're mm-hmm. when you're in a you know playing sports and it gets right. so competitive for kids and yes. so much pressure. So he wanted it to right. be a safe place for them to to experience um, you know growth, but not not have to be competing against it. And so it really right. stemmed from that. And then he really just created this amazing movement based uh, program of learning and imaginative play and and really just to help build confidence and skills that really help that child, you know, hopefully we get them at four months, which is what we strive for, but it really, as they say in the program, it helps build, you know, all of those different skills that they need sort of throughout their life. And then in 1992, that's when we um, started franchising, and Mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we now are in um, 31 countries, and we have over 400 locations, so it's it's quite uh, quite an amazing story, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is an amazing story, Nancy. And, you know, the, the theme of our podcast, you know, over the last two years, it, it was hard to get through a show, you know, w- without talking about the, the effects of, of COVID, particularly on, on children. Mm-hmm. We know a lot of children that really, yeah. you know, suffered during during the time of, of, of COVID. And, you know, so socialization has always been important for yeah. uh, children, Nancy. Maybe you could talk about that, you know, because it, it's even more important now than ever, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, and you know, it, it became, I think, very organically obvious um, to mm-hmm. parents during COVID yes. that, like, oh my gosh, like, if my children are not around other children, it, like, it really had an, an effect on. I mean, it had an effect on us as adults, but sure. for the children, it absolutely mm-hmm. um, had an effect. And so, I think coming out of COVID, it was a really a wake up call for parents, like, oh my gosh, like, I have to right. make sure that you know, I am able to, you know, put my children in in an environment where they right. can socialize with other children and really just see other types of children, right? Like mm-hmm. whether they have disabilities or, you know, like right. being around all right. sorts of different types of kids, it's really important. Um, and, it, yeah. and we really have noticed how how much better socialized are the little gym kids are. But then, you know, even prior to COVID, think about all the technology that is now in the hands of our kids at such a mm-hmm. young age. Like I, yes. I remember my husband, he didn't get his first cell phone until I think he was like 30. Is that right? Or something crazy. <laughs> and he was just like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not That's doing great. it. And now, you know, kids at two years old have smartphones, right? And so they're, they're really like tied into this technology in their hands, which what happens is they're on their phones or they're on their iPads and so they're yes. not socializing. So I think right. we were we were seeing that, I think, pre COVID for sure, but then, mm-hmm. you know, combine the two together and I think it just really highlighted like, let's step away from the T V, let's step away from um, right. you know, the technology right. and let's really like, you know, play with other kids and, and how yeah. much that really does help their development. Yeah, it's so important. And, you you know, you mentioned some of them, but, you know, some of the the, the benefits that children can get out of the little gym. But maybe, you know, we could talk about Mm -hmm. some activities at the gym that, you know, are are key for childhood development, Nancy. Yeah, you know, when when I, you know, I've just uh, been on board with the little gym since October when Mm -hmm. when we went through the acquisition. And so it's been a fun learning experience for me because, you know, in my mind before I I came on board, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just about the physical aspects, right? So it, 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 it is, that is a big part of what we do, but we really have three 
um, uh, dimensional learning. We have a three-dimensional learning program, so there's really three mm -hmm. key uh, elements. One is physical, so it's the get moving, sure. um, and that's really what allows kids to develop, you know, their flexibility, their strength, their balance, coordination, all those sorts of things, and they obviously do that through the equipment in the gym, balance beams, bars, and things like that. So that's a very obvious big part of our uh, what we do with kids and, and really just get right. them. Yeah, I love it because I'm so physically active, and I sure. just love – getting to kids so early to create that foundation for them right, that will, right. I know, carry them through into adulthood. But then the second um, part for our learning is brain boost. And so that's really about the brain and the cognitive learning. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's really where we work with them on, you know, nurturing listening skills, concentration, um, decision making, you know, all those different things that we right. do. And, and we have 100 plus songs that we've created that Robin was yeah. a huge part of. Um, right. And that really helps the kids learn in a really fun way. And then yeah. the citizen kid is our third, and that's what we kind of were talking about earlier, which is the socialization. And so mm -hmm. that really is where we focus on, like, let's we really want to promote sharing and teamwork, cooperation, leadership, you know, all those different things that, again, are, are so foundational for um, kids and obviously, right. you know, turning them into amazing adults, you know, when they get to that sure. time. So those are really the three the three focuses that we have for our program that work so wonderfully together mm -hmm. um, and, you know, make our kids amazing. That's fantastic. The majority of, of our listeners, Nancy, as you know, is we, we call them aspiring franchipreneurs. You know, most of them are, are, are yeah. really looking at franchising for, for, for the first time. So why is now the right time to join the little gym as, as a franchisee? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, a lot of the things that I mentioned about what we're seeing, um, mm -hmm. you know, out there, what parents are like, oh, my gosh, we need you now more than ever. Yes, um, right. So that, um, that is just sort of an organic learning now that we've been certainly trying to educate our moms on for years, for 46 years, right, on how wonderful our program is. And now, mm -hmm. um, now it's just such a, a, a wonderful fit. And so... Um, you know, that being a big part of it, we have just that amazing program. We have an amazing, amazing uh, brand uh, that, that you know, you, you earlier sharing your story, and I hear right, so many stories right. of that where kids are now having kids that have mm -hmm. been in the gym, and, and they just right. have some amazing memories. So the brand is solid, um, and I think that's always an, a really important thing that you want to look at when you're looking at a franchise. And then obviously the acquisition with Unleashed Brands, because what, right. what and that's what really attracted me. I love our brand, but then having that back end support, infrastructure, resources, like that's what helps brands go big, right? That's what helps right. them do the right things. It helps you streamline operations. So it's easier for our franchisees to run their business. It allows us to expand in markets we're not in. So it's an exciting time. It's certainly a time of change, no doubt, sure. um, for our right. you know existing franchisees. But um, you know, there's a lot of excitement out there with you know candidates coming through that love sort of again the stability and the the brand awareness that we have with being a 46 year old brand. But then now you know adding that layer with Unleashed, where we've got now six companies that are really focused on mom and kids, and and that. Right. Can't, that just is only going to lead to great things, right? Because we're all passionate about the same things. We're all driving toward those same results of like, how can we help more kids? Um, and that's exciting, exciting time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How does that, for our listeners, Nancy, I mean, how does that help? You know, it's, it's interesting when, when I think of um, Unleashed Brands, I've, I've interviewed a lot of those um, franchises that are part of the Unleashed Brands uh, family, I guess, Snapology, or Air, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of those. Yeah. How, how, does that, how does that help a, a, a franchise like, um, like the Little Gym? Yeah, so, you know, I think, again, having that singular focus across mm -hmm. so many brands, just it, it just so much great brain power, right, where we're right, all driving right. towards that the same sense. thing. So, I mean, that's great. <clears throat> and then, yeah, I think it's, it's the infrastructure, right? And so, uh, you know, w even though we have been around for so long, like as you know, mm -hmm. they've been doing this for so long, like right. companies go through tremendous growth and sometimes they yes. get off track on infrastructure right. or right. maybe they never had it or maybe it's outdated. And, mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's hard to like backtrack and figure out like, oh, my God, having to change all of that is, is really tough. So, again, I think it's the right time for our brand. It was time for an infrastructure upgrade because the business gets harder to, to operate, right? And it can't be. Right. It's got to be easier for our franchisees to operate so they can just focus on building great teams. Um, right. and so I think that infrastructure piece is huge. And then, you know, I, I'm really excited about – 
you know, just ways that we can make it easier for mom to buy from us. So, like, that right. is also, again, a part of the infrastructure. Like, it's we have to be easy to engage with. And so mm-hmm. that's, um, you know, definitely what Unleashed um, really focuses on. And then the, the beautiful things that come as we grow are, you know, really the profitability, right? So it's being able to right. leverage our scale. And now with so many locations, we're able to, you know, look at, you know, having sharing common vendors and then being able to negotiate better rates um, for franchisees, whether it be merchant service fees or insurance right, or, right. Um, you know, products and supplies yeah. and all these different things that are just your, you know, either upon startup you have, you know, costs that you incur and then just your day-to-day operational costs. And we are just now starting to see, like, some of those amazing benefits that, and some of those mm-hmm. amazing contracts that we're able to go back and renegotiate going, hey, guess what? We have six brands now. Like, we want to have an, a, a different conversation. And that just goes right to the bottom line for our franchisees, right. which, you know, always makes me happy. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's fantastic. You know, I was thinking, Nancy, you know, it, it didn't even occur to me, you know, that, that I mentioned to you I had my son's birthday party, his first birthday party mm-hmm. at the little gym, but, you know, not realizing that, he got invitations probably, you know, a dozen times afterwards to a little gym. Um, you know, so birthday mm-hmm. parties are a big part for, for the little gym. And I know you have this great promotion, this national promotion going on. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that because that sounds really interesting. Yeah, and so we, you know, we really wanted to get back to it because we did mm-hmm. lose some momentum with birthday parties with COVID, right? Yeah. Because we couldn't have them. Right. Um, and so, right. you know, if, if you, you you slip off on, on something, um, you know, you got to put focus back onto it. So while it's, you know, about 15, 20% um, is what we're really striving for um, as a product mix for our business, what's in, I think what the, what the exciting parts of it for me are just what you shared, right? So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's allowing us to be a part of those amazing celebrations celebrations with our right. kids. It's allowing right. them to be the hero, right? To be like, right. Fred had the most amazing birthday party yes. ever. Like he, uh, you know, all the kids exactly. want to be the hero and have the best birthday party. So yeah. it allows us to, you know, celebrate with them, but also make them the hero. But then it also, you know, allows us to get in front of maybe some new potential um, members, right? So kids that right. maybe are in the area but have never heard of us before, right. um, moms that have never engaged with our brand before, because, you know, moms really get a lot out of our business too, because it's also mm-hmm. a very net, tight network for moms because it's, you right. know, they're going to the same that classes every week. And so yeah. it's, it's a really important piece for them too. But um, yeah, so it, it allows us to have just, you know, lead generation for, for future programs sure. um, in addition to, to having those celebrations and having uh, yeah. stories like yours where years right, and years and right. years later, like people, you know, kids and parents still remember oh, yeah. that experience. And I think we want to be a part of that. That's wonderful. What types of, um, speaking of franchising, Nancy, well, what types of characteristics or traits are in, important to you? Or, or, or the little gym, you know, before taking on a, a franchisee, what's most important to you? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of things that I certainly look for, you know, being in franchising for, you know, mm-hmm. 25 plus years now. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always say, like, first and foremost, and when I had my own franchise and talked to my franchisees, I'm like, look, you've got to have a passion for the business. Like, business is hard, right? Like, or right. If, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So it's right. definitely right. easier in a franchise. But if you don't have that passion that's going to carry you through those little bumps and hurdles that happen along the way, then it, it's just not going to be a lot of fun. And so, you know, yeah, our, right. our franchisees, like, they have to have a passion at their core for helping kids and mm-hmm. nursing kids and, and really wanting to be a part of that amazing experience. And then in addition to that, I think, you know, again, I've learned and I've seen the traits that lead to great franchisees, and it always comes back to, you know, people who appreciate the systems and processes that have been created um, and, right. and have been put in place to allow the business to grow and succeed. And so, right. you know, there's entrepreneurs that, you know, don't that like to run their own course mm-hmm. and do their own things, and that typically right. that they're not going to fit well into a fr- right. franchise organization. So we really like that, you know, that candidate, that franchisee that really embraces the structure, um, also just great builders of teams, as you know, like that is – critical, critical, critical. Like you have to be able to build great teams because you can't just buy yourself a job. You have to be able to be a great leader, um, Mm -hmm. create that sort of career pathing for your team so that you can, you know, uh, step out and really work on the business and not be in it um, so much. And then, you know, I always look for collaborators, right? Like I want, Mm -hmm. again, like we're not perfect. We make mistakes, um, but I love 
the collaboration with franchisees on, okay, if we stumble, like, let's just get in a room and talk about it um, and fix it, right? And you've got to have people that um, right. are, are willing to do that and, and have, you know, a strong sort of business sense and leadership that will help us grow because it's, it's a team effort for sure. Oh, absolutely. The, um, we have this great quotes in franchising podcast, Nancy, and it's kind of like the like top 50 quotes we, we've had on the show, you know, over like 800 podcasts. And, and you're actually in there. I mm-hmm. asked you this, this question you oh, know, really? 10 years ago, and, and, and so it, was, it was great that you were in there. So I have to ask you again, because, you know, you, you know a decade later, I mean, you, still, you have so much more experience and you've been doing this for such a long time what what advice would you give to our listeners in their quest to buy a franchise because you know it seems like there's more there's more choices out there today than maybe there was a decade Mm -hmm. ago you know so it seems a little bit overwhelming for our listeners you know so so where do they begin i mean from everything you've learned up to this point what advice would you give to someone who's kind of like new to franchising and are just kind of like beginning their search Yeah, I mean, again, like, you know, even for me when I started my business and, you know, you sort of put a list together of like, what do I like? What don't I like? What are Mm -hmm. non-negotiables for me? And so kind of narrowing down because you're right. It is so overwhelming out there. Right, There's so much. And so you got to find something in your background, something that draws you to it. Like, again, a lot of our candidates have been customers, right, of our brand. And I think that tends to happen. So I would always tell people, like, think about companies that you engage with now because mm-hmm. sometimes you don't even realize they're a franchise and, and think That's about true. what you love about right. that business and what it, if there's something that pulls at your heartstrings, like that would be something that you should, you know, either look at that business and see if it's a franchise or something similar to it. So just think about how you engage in your everyday life. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once you can kind of narrow it down to maybe some companies, then I think it becomes about really getting to know that brand and getting to right. know you know, the franchisees, the leadership team, like, and you, you know, I always tell people, like, if you get rushed through a process, Mm -hmm. be careful about that because you really want to be able to engage with brands that are like, look, like, look, we're not going to take a year, right? Like there is a process, but you want to make sure that they're taking their time with you because they should, you know, you should each be interviewing each other uh, on both sides because as a franchisor, like, look, sometimes we do say no because it's not the right fit. And if it's not the right fit, then that person is going to fail, right? Or they're not going right. to be as successful as right. they want to be. And so we're doing them a favor by saying no. And so you, I think you want to really make sure that you're looking for brands that have a good process, that are mm-hmm. giving you the time, that are allowing you to ask questions. How are they answering the tough questions, right? Are right. they defensive or are they open? And, right. you know, that, that engagement and interaction, both, again, with the leadership team, with other franchisees, Mm -hmm. Um, really understanding like what is everybody talks about what what it's like when it's great but what is it like when it's maybe not (laughs) so great on a day you know and like what happens then um you know and so i think making sure that there's really solid systems in place processes in place and what is their um what is their vision for the future and and how does that fit into your vision for the future so those are some things that i always like to yeah. share and, and encourage, um, you know, potential franchisees to really take the time, think through it, ask a lot of right. a lot of those questions and just really spend time getting, because it's like dating, you're dating, sure. because you're going to get married. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so That's, it you sure is, yeah. Time to, to date that person, it's true. yeah. It's true, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great response, Nancy. So I, I could ask you, that the, the last question, as the president and CEO of the little gym, Nancy, I mean, if you could look into a crystal ball, you know, whether it's a year, three years, five years down the road, I mean, where, where do you see the little gym, Nancy? Yeah, I mean, it's it's exciting because already we're having record-breaking a year, right, which is mm-hmm. fun for me. And, um, and, and, you know, look, right now we're going through a lot of change um, with the sale and we're, again, upgrading infrastructure. And that's that's hard, right, for franchises right. that have been around for a long time. So right. the future for me uh, immediately is like, let's get through that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because once right. we can get through those upgrades, then yeah. it's like that's where the fun really comes in because then we can really, like, get engaged more with franchisees. Like, let's figure out, like, how we can really go even bigger. And so, mm-hmm. again, I'm excited about streamlining the business because we have – 
so many franchisees that want to grow with us and open more locations, but it's right. you know you can't you can't be everywhere. So the more streamlined we can get our business, the more opportunities we have. Certainly, what's exciting for me too, and what I see already happening is with our sister brands. You know, we we are having interest in our sister brands. Who you know, it's, it, what's exciting is they like if it's an Urban Air or a Snapology. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the market is sold out for uh, sure. for um, right. Urban Airs in their market, and so if they want to expand their business portfolio, that means they have to go outside of their territory, which means more travel, more right. you know, time away from family and things like that. Now that we have you know, six brands, now it's a whole Great. different ballgame for them because now they're going, oh my gosh, like I can expand in my existing market, but I can expand with the little gym and you right. know, with Snapology. And so we're, we're getting our sister brands who are really excited about the little gym. And so I'm excited to expand with our existing franchisees. I'm excited to expand with our sister brands um, mm -hmm. and really, really work with our franchisees to grow their own portfolios. And so that um, you know, new gym development um, uh, is is a big focus for us right now because we have so mm -hmm. much open space. We have not been really expanding much in, in a, a lot of years uh, just because, you know, right. lack of focus, right? Sure, um, sure. So we have amazing opportunities still out there, and, and that's very exciting to me because it's, it's always been, you know, sort of my passion is helping, helping others uh, get to their dream of business ownership if it's right, right for them. Um, right. Because that's I've done it right. I've done it myself. Personally, exactly, and it is the most gratifying thing I've ever done, and I get excited wow. about helping others do that too. So, and again, the more we have, the more kids we're we're, we're sure. able to help, and ultimately, that's what we're all here for. So, that's wonderful. What, what's the best way, Nancy, for our listeners to get more information on the Little Gym? Of course, as the franchise opportunity, but even maybe the, the service itself. Uh, are there any websites you want to uh, plug? Yeah, thelittlegym.com. Just visit us there. You can see all that we're doing, and um, mm -hmm. both on the consumer side and on the franchising side. That's fantastic. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you again, Nancy. I, I'm not going to wait 10 years uh, to talk to you again. <laughs> <Please don't>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can have you back in another year or two, you know, and, and you, know, That'd be can, great. you know, catch up on the little gym, you know, and, and, and then watch the growth and everything like that. But it was such a privilege and honor for me to, to speak with you again. Thanks, Marty. It was great talking to you again as well. Thanks, Nancy. This has been my pleasure. We'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes and Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Today's great quote in franchising is being brought to you by The Stone Coat Franchise Opportunity. Are you looking for a unique and lucrative franchise opportunity? If so, take a look at Stone Coat. With a patented process which creates a true stone finish on almost any wall or ceiling, Stone Coat is a true game-changing product in the multi-billion dollar construction industry. Stone Coat is applied faster, cleaner, and cheaper than conventional quarried stone, which saves both time and money. With advantages in remodel and new construction of both residential and commercial projects, Stone Coat is a true crossover product. The Stone Coat franchise opportunity provides a low startup cost, low operating expenses, comprehensive training, ongoing support, and no royalty payments. For more information on the Stone Coat franchise opportunity, go to www.stonecoatfranchise.com. That's www.stonecoatfranchise.com or call us at 972-380-2700. That's 972-380-2700. 
Hi everyone, this is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, Don and I have been hosting Franchise Interviews now all years, and during that time, we've had some incredible quotes on the show. Today you're going to get to hear from Lauren Stock Cohen, who is a veteran of the franchise industry, who first franchised Great American Cookies 33 years ago. He became the first ever franchisee inducted into the International Franchise Association Hall of Fame, and you're going to get to hear from him right now. Uh, what made you decide to go into franchising, Doc? I mean, again, you had you know a couple different choices, I guess, at that time of your life. What was it about you know becoming a franchisee? Well, I had been part of... Um other startups and I knew just how difficult it was to begin a concept so let's just say I had wanted to be Doc's Cookies Mm -hmm. Uh, I could have done that I could have said all right, Right. well now I've got to develop a recipe I've got to do my marketing program I've got to get the financing I've got to do an operations manual I've got to figure out how to do it I've got to figure out where the locations ought to be and your franchising, a lot of that's done for you already. Um, a franchise yeah. provides a concept that's been proven and tested. Somebody else has done all that work. Uh, it, the systems are typically in place and have been um, revised um, over time to uh, prove that they can be successful. And uh-huh. It was just a great way to go. Mm. The question I've been dying to ask you is what's changed in franchising? I mean, you've been involved in it for such a long time now. Uh, what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen, Doc, over, over that time? Well, there have been a number of them. I think probably the most significant is the level of sophistication of, of the franchisee today mm. uh, as opposed to when I went into it. And, and you know, I don't. I don't think I'm the most unsophisticated person in the world, looking mm-hmm. back, but I, I really went into this without doing sufficient homework. And so, as I said, a lot of this was luck back then. Today, franchisees are much more likely to, to have very strong legal advice, very strong financial advice. Mm-hmm are familiar with things like business plans. I didn't know what a business plan was when I went into business. I had no idea what a business plan was. And today's franchisees are much more um, uh, knowledgeable about those things. And and to, today, franchisees are more likely to be multi-unit and multi-brand. Uh, that's, the, that's something that has changed significantly over the years is that today you find franchisees like myself, in fact, that operate multiple brands and sometimes across different companies. So, you know, we have two brands for my own franchisor, and then I operate Mm -hmm. actually three other concepts. Wow, it's it's interesting. Are you surprised about the number of franchise systems and the number of industries that are now franchising, Doc? I mean, when you first got into this, you know, going back 33 years ago, I mean, there weren't as many systems, there weren't as many industries. I guess it might have been maybe a little easier to get into franchising because it seems like there's so many choices and so many industries today. Are are you surprised at the number of systems and industries? No, not at all. I mean, it's funny because 33 years ago... uh, I was thinking, oh my gosh, how do I how do I get to be a franchisee? You must really have to know somebody <laughs> to get yeah. one of these franchises. And what I think's happened over the years is that as franchising has grown, people have recognized uh, that it's such a great way to grow a business. So you have an entrepreneur who has this great idea, and the entrepreneur <laughs> develops the idea and sees it bloom and. It gets he or she gets going with it, and it's it's really fantastic. And then somebody uh, else sees it and says, "Gee, I, you know, that's a great idea. I'd like to do it." And and you know, as an entrepreneur, you may be sitting there with limited capital, and you say, "Well, yeah, I can teach you how to do this." And you you really uh, get excited about the prospect of teaching someone else how to do the business that you've developed and grown. And I think that's what's exciting about franchising. And that's why I think, for one reason anyway, why franchising has grown. It's a great way for an entrepreneur to get more rapid growth 
of of a concept that um, that he or she has developed. Thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see you again soon with another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising from Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone. <laughs>